In this video, I'm going to give you five beginner keyboard shortcuts that you need to be using if you're getting started with Premiere Pro. And then I'm going to give you five more advanced, sort of not so popular keyboard shortcuts that will really up your editing game and make you a more efficient video editor. So let's get straight to the first five. So number one is a set of keys, the J, K, and L keys. Here I have a video that, another YouTube video that I recently published. And the J, K, and L keys are the play, pause, and rewind buttons. So J will rewind. And so if I'm here on my keyboard, it will rewind. K will pause and then L will go forward. And then I'm also using the space key, uh, the space bar to pause and play. You can double tap the L or the J keys to double your speed. So if I press L once, twice, three times, four times, you can keep going depending on how fast your computer is basically. I, I forget what the limit is, if it's four times as fast or what, but you can speed up your workflow. And so when I'm editing long interviews, I often will play at double speed so that it goes a little bit quicker. And so I'm using uh, both the K and the L, the spacebar keys sort of interchangeably. But these are keys that you definitely want to be using rather than, you know, going with your mouse, clicking play, pressing stop, moving around that way. It's just not efficient. So that was number one, J, K, and L. Pretty basic stuff. Number two is another set of keys, the I and O keys. So this is for setting your in and out points. I often use these uh, for when I'm viewing my footage up here in the source monitor. I typically go through my B-roll and I'll just scrub through the footage and then I'll play through it. And then I will press the I key to set the in point and the O key to set the out point, meaning we're just going to take that selection there. And then I can choose to take the whole video clip and place it on my timeline or I could just choose the video only or the audio only. There are some other keyboard shortcuts here that will sort of speed up that workflow, but I typically just am dragging and dropping. That's one area that I haven't really gotten into the keyboard shortcuts yet. So that's the I and O for in, in point, out point. I also use that on my timeline. Sometimes I have multiple videos or parts of a video that I want to export. So again, the I and the O will set that in and out point, and you can set select to basically export just that area if you want. Or if you have like the end of your video, for example, is here, and I'm gonna set my out point there. Sometimes as an editor, you kind of have a lot of like extra clips and junk over to the right of your timeline that you don't wanna export. And so you gotta make sure you set that out point there to just export your actual video. So I and O. Number three is the up and down arrow keys. And this kind of goes in conjunction with, a, I'll give you a little bonus one, the plus and minus keyboard uh, keys will zoom in and out of your timeline, which is something you'll likely be doing all of the time. But the up and down arrows, it basically jumps to the start or the end of your clips on your timeline. You can see how I go back and forth between these clips. It's jumping up and down. Up goes backwards, down goes forward. You will notice though, as I go forward, it's only doing it for the clips on track video one and audio one. It's not really looking at video two track. And that's because over here, my toggle track targeting option is only set to V1 and A1. If I set this to V2, for example, if I press the, and let, let's do V3 just so you can kind of see more. If I press the up button, see how it went to the beginning of this clip now? And now that clip and this clip, so it's using all of the tracks to basically determine if it should stop at that beginning or end of the clip. Say I'm working on just my B-roll. Sometimes I have it like this and I set it to just V3 or whatever my, um, my B-roll tr track is. And I'm like, why is it still going to all of my other tracks? It's because it's on A1. So we gotta turn A1 off. But now if it's just V3, 
it will just go to all of my B-roll, which you see up there. Um, that's just all my B-roll. So that's another kind of quick thing that I do a lot. It just depends on um, your workflow, but the up and down arrow keys helps me out a lot. Number four and number five are tools that you can find here on your toolbar. Um, if you don't see that there, if you go up to window and you go to tools, that's where it's gonna be. But the first one is basically knowing to go between V, which is your selection tool, and then A is another tool I often use. V is your typical tool. You can click around, you can edit the ends or the beginnings of clips. You can go in and take the volume of your audio and move it up and down. It's just a selector. A is a different type of selector where right now, if you just pressed A, you get this double arrow to the right. And that's basically allowing me to select everything to the right of where I click. So I can select all that and move it to the right. Say I need to add a clip in between this first part of the video and the second part, maybe I wanna add a title card or whatever it is, I can basically break it up this way. I'm gonna undo that, Command Z, obviously a good keyboard shortcut to know as well. Um, there's a couple other things that you need to know about this one. If you press the shift button, it will allow you to select just a single track. And of course, if you have audio and video that is connected, linked or grouped in any way, um, it will select both the audio and video when you select it this way. But as you can see here, I can kind of go through and pick just a single track. And that's sometimes helpful. Another thing you'll want to know is to select everything to the left of the cursor, you have to press the shift button and then A again. And so that's gonna do the single sele track selection backwards. And then when you let go of shift, it's gonna do, do the all selection to the left. And then to get back to the right side, you press A. So just play around with the shift and the A buttons and you'll kind of figure it out. Um, but that's just one that I, sometimes use in the middle of an edit when I've done a bunch of stuff and I just need to break up the edit and move everything to the right, everything from the right of my cursor over to make room. I press V to go back to the uh, selection tool. And the last easy sort of more important one for beginners is C for razor blade. So there's lots of ways to edit your video, but the razor blade is one tool that I often use. If I'm editing a long interview, which I'll often put on a timeline and edit it that way, I won't just edit it from the source monitor. I'll be playing it here, and then if I need to make a cut in the middle of it, I'll just take C, press C to get the razor blade, and I will make that cut. And then depending on what the video is, maybe I'll go back to my selection tool and, you know, cut the rest of that clip out. Maybe I'll make two cuts and then just delete that part. So the C razor blade tool is a good one to know. And then another kind of tip is if you press the shift button with the razor blade tool selected, it creates a double razor blade, which will cut through all of the tracks, all of the clips. So again, this is another way to sort of split the clips and then if I can combine that with A for select all and now move all of that and I've created like a split basically with that double razor blade and then the all selection forward tool, whatever it's technically called. So razor blade tool, that's another one to know. Before I get to the new set of keyboard shortcuts that you should definitely learn and add to your workflow, I wanted to mention a product that will make this a lot easier if you're a beginner or even if you're an advanced editor or um, if, even without Premiere Pro. There's a keyboard called the Logic Keyboard. Now I do have to say that they did, the company did send me, and you can see the website here, they sent me a couple models to test out to see how I like them and to just give a review if I wanted to. And I am happy to share that this is a keyboard that I think is super solid for any sort of creative professional. 
they have lots of different options here. So here, let's see, they have options for video creators, audio creators, graphic designers, and for pretty much most of the common applications out there. And basically what it looks like, I'll open up the Adobe Premiere Pro one, if you go to Mac keyboards, is it's an actual keyboard with the shortcut buttons sort of printed on the keys. So this is great because you don't have to be wondering where a certain keyboard shortcut is. It has the icons on the keyboard. It has the text down there as well. And so you can quickly know and find the right keyboard shortcut. Now the benefit of this for someone like me is that I was very stuck in my ways of using the same keyboard shortcuts consistently. And I knew there were lots of other ones out there. But it wasn't until actually, and I, I, honest to God, it wasn't until actually using this keyboard that I started using some of these other ones and even knew that these other ones existed. So we're gonna get to those keyboard shortcuts right now and then I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what I like about the Logic Keyboard and if I actually recommend it, who I recommend it for and sort of uh, more of a in-depth review of what it's like. But let's get to the sh new keyboard shortcuts that I'm really excited to be using nowadays. All right, so the first one is a very simple one that I honestly didn't know about, and that is D, which is select clip. It's a pretty basic one, but if you are scrubbing through your timeline, and this will depend on which track targeting option you have, but right now I have V1 on. And say I wanna select a clip, instead of actually going down here with my mouse and spending all of that time <laughs> dragging my mouse down an inch to get that, I can be playing through and then I can just press the D key on my keyboard and it selects that clip. And what I love about that is I often use this when I want to go and change something, some property in the effect controls or play with the effects on it. Uh, for example, for this clip, maybe I want to scale it up, scale it down or whatever. And instead of having to, again, go down here and click it, I can just scrub through my timeline, press the D key. It automatically selects that clip that's on the track one. And I can go through and its properties are already up here. Before using D, I found myself always like playing through a video and then going with my mouse and selecting it. Now, I think there might be other ways to um, work around this, but the D key is one that I've started using. You can also change your track ta target here. And so if you wanna select track two or whatever, you can do that as well. The second one that I learned about here is, it's the button that, it's the backslash key. Um, it's the button above the return key. It basically zooms out to your entire timeline. And this is something that I literally would have loved to learn years ago because I spent so much time pressing the little minus key button at a bunch of times, depending on what the project is, that can be a lot of times, instead of just pressing the backslash key, key. is that the backslash? Yes, the backslash is the one above return, below delete, and it just, automatically snaps and zooms the project to the timeline itself. So if I delete that little bit right there, as you can see, that's how it was. If I deleted that, but then press the backslash button again, it jumps to that. So it basically brings the entire timeline of your video in view. Super, super helpful. The third one is another thing that I just literally didn't know, but because it is here on the keyboard, I can literally see it. If I press the shift button, it's color coded so I can see if I want to use the shift button or the command button. It gives me what that actually will do as well. Um, so if I press the shift button and I go, I want to get to effects, for example, it's shift seven and that's going to open up my effects bin. Crazy, right? Before this, I was kind of digging through here. If it wasn't open, like I would have to go up here, but okay, let's get rid of effects. Let's turn that off. Close panel. 
Shift seven opens it up. Effects. It has it for all of the win all of these big windows. Project source. Your timelines down here. That should always be up. Effects controls. All these windows and panels. Audio mixer. Oh my god. I love I always need the audio track mixer open. Um, not always, but sometimes I do. Media folder if you're importing. So just knowing that shift plus the numbers at the top, your numbers opens up panels is another big game changer for me. And it's all thanks to the Logic Keyboard. The fourth one, um, I'll be honest, it's one I knew already before I had this keyboard, but it's another important one that just helps while you are editing, oftentimes if I'm showing a, an edit to my wife, Isabel, or to a friend I'm working on, and I don't wanna export it, but I wanna show it to them without all of this junk on the screen, to zoom in or basically make a specific window full screen, all you have to press is the tilde button. That's the little squiggly line below the escape key on the top left of your keyboard. You just have to be on that window. So if I bring up the program window, press the little tilde button, it brings it up full screen. And it's just a button that I often use now when I am viewing back my video and I want a better sort of full screen option. And bonus tip, if you want a completely full screen playback, it's just the control tilde button up there as well. So that's gonna do the same thing, but completely full screen. And then the last one is another one I just literally didn't know about until I was looking at this keyboard and I'm on the F key and it says find. I'm like, what does find mean? And so when you have a click selected and you press the F key, it brings up that clip on that playhead spot into your source monitor. And I think this is super awesome because when I'm going through B-roll, for example, sometimes I'm looking through my B-roll clips and I know that, okay, this shot was maybe two minutes long. I don't want to scrub through it here, try to figure it out on the timeline. I can just press F on my keyboard, bring it up here. I don't have to go through my project panel and find that clip itself. Again, it's just right there. Say this one, I know it's a different clip, and it's right there in the source monitor, ready for me to find another clip to add, adjust the edit, whatever I need to do. F, my finger is always on that button, but I never knew that it did anything. So I hope these 10-ish keyboard shortcuts help you out, whether you're a brand new beginner to Premiere Pro or someone who uses Premiere Pro frequently. Um, I definitely learned a lot by using this keyboard. And I it's, to be honest, it's a very solid keyboard. It's made properly, it's hefty, it's not light, it's not a light keyboard. It's a keyboard meant for a workstation in one place, not something you're gonna be wanting to lug around in your backpack. The cool thing about it is that it is backlit, so if you want like a, to dim your lights but still be able to see your keys, it's you can do that. It also comes with USB inputs. To use this, it, it does come with two USB plugs that you have to plug into your computer, but then on your keyboard, you get two additional ones. So you're not really losing out on anything. Um, for example, I have my Zoom H6 audio re recorder plugged in right now as my audio interface, and it's right in my keyboard right here, rather than having to plug it in behind my iMac, which is very beneficial. I also have this, which is the Tourbox Tech um, tool that is for, I use for Lightroom and Photoshop. Lots of little buttons and dials just to speed up my workflow there. And that can be plugged into the keyboard itself um, instead of, again, the back of the computer. The keyboard that I've been using is the After Effects and Premiere Pro combo. So this is the Adobe Filmmaker Edition. So it works for both in the sense that it has the keyboard shortcuts laid out on each key. Um, for both uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects on the top and bottom. So that's pretty cool. 
and they have different options like that um that are kind of combo i think for photography they have uh where's photo maybe that's under graphics yeah they have like adobe photographer which has lightroom and photoshop which makes sense because you're using those two programs a lot the only thing i'll say about whether this is really the best option for you or not is that it's kind of a pricey it's 150 bucks for the keyboard itself they are selling skins where you can just kind of put them over and this isn't anything really that new um, but that's something that might be beneficial and a little bit more affordable than buying a brand new keyboard or if you're working on something like your laptop you might not need a full other keyboard um, but it helps you learn those keyboard shortcuts and I at the end of the day I think that's the thing that I would recommend this for uh, who I'd recommend it for it's for people who are getting started um, if I was a new editor and I had this, it would definitely make me a better editor from the get go because using keyboard shortcuts is important for that and will do that. As someone who's been using Premiere Pro for over 10 years now, um, it's as I've learned a couple new keyboard shortcuts, it's forced me to do that because of my curiosity looking at this keyboard, this keyboard and being like, man, there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts I'm not using. What are all of these? But um, for so someone who's that experienced, who already has a workflow, the amount that you're going to learn and benefit from it isn't that great, I would say. So I hope this video was helpful, both in terms of the shortcuts you learned, but also if you were interested in the Logic Keyboard, hopefully it helps you out. I give it two thumbs up for what it is, and I think it'll be very beneficial for a lot of people out there. Cheers.